Data augmentation is usually used to form new examples that share the same class label as the original instance. However, we also know of data augmentations that either corrupt the class label or particularly push the image to be out of the distribution of, say, natural images. An example of this is the jigsaw augmentation where you uh, patch up an image and then scramble the patches so that you destroy the global structure of the image. This paper explores these kinds of augmentations, termed as negative data augmentations, and sees how we can integrate them into our training loops to make use of these kinds of priors as well. The authors show very interesting and exciting results with training GANs and contrastive learning frameworks such as Contrastive Predictive Coding and MoCo. I think this is a really exciting strategy to extend the use of data augmentation and further improve the ability to learn with less labeled data. This video will explain negative data augmentation. The high level motivation behind negative data augmentation is that most of these papers on data augmentation and discussing different ways to transform our existing data examples are focused on this concept of label preserving or semantically preserving transformations. We have images of things like flowers, dogs, cats, or we have uh, text sequences, or we have any kind of data domain, and we're trying to find uh, transformations that give us more data but preserve the class label of our original data instance. So a lot of the problems that are related to data augmentation are with this difficulty of trying to find these transformations for data domains outside of images that are semantically preserving or label preserving. So this idea of negative data augmentation is saying, well, what about the, the transformations that aren't label preserving? How can we still use those? Because those still have an interesting prior about what is uh, out of the support of the data distribution. So the motivating question behind this research paper is, is there a use for intentionally out of distribution data augmentations? And shown here in image augmentation, this is a great example of this. We have our original image of a dog and then we have the jigsaw augmentation. So the jigsaw augmentation randomly crops an image and then shuffles the ordering of the uh, patches from the crops so that you have this new potential uh, image pixel grid for learning from. And this is completely out of distribution for natural images. There's no uh, dog image that would be organized like this. So this is an intentionally out of distribution kind of data augmentation. And this paper, negative data augmentation, is gonna integrate these kind of augmentations into contrastive learning and generative adversarial networks to see how we can leverage these data augmentations, which I think is a really exciting direction because it's much easier to find uh, or I don't know about much easier because I haven't really thought about this too much, but it does seem like there are definitely a lot of candidates for, uh, you know, not label preserving transformations and out of distribution transformations, and they still have useful priors for learning from. So this paper is going to explore this kind of idea with uh, generative adversarial networks and the contrastive learning framework. So one last time before getting into the details of the implementation, here are some quotes from the paper. Data augmentation strategies exploit known invariances of the data distribution, such as the conditional label distribution being invariant to semantic preserving transformations. This is describing how most of these data augmentation approaches are really only looking for label preserving transformations. Whereas differently in this paper, we explore negative data augmentation strategies, NDA, that intentionally create out of distribution samples. So I think this is a really exciting idea of exploring these other kind of data augmentations and seeing how they can be integrated in the training loop to improve performance. Next up is the technical consideration of how to select a good negative data augmentation strategy. So from the paper, we may consider NDA examples to be ones that preserve local features and break global features. So it forces the CNNs to learn global features by realizing that the NDAs are different from real data. So more particularly, we're going to be looking at these data augmentations like the jigsaw augmentation, which is going to be our like holy grail example of this, where it really is um, corrupting this global structure. So it's rearranged these patches, and so it's causing the model to hopefully have a sense of this global structure because we're passing in this example of corrupting the global structure and saying this is out of distribution. This kind of image, this corruption of this uh, global structure of an image, because it still has all the same local features. You still have the dog's nose, you still have the dog's uh, eye, and so on with respect to any kind of image that you might be shuffling around like this, but it's changing the global structure. So by particularly augmenting it like this and then passing it in through this prior of saying this is out of distribution, this is a negative data augmentation, the model should hopefully be able to reconstruct this idea that uh, this has the global structure has been corrupted and that's what makes this out of distribution. So when we're passing this into the, say, the generative adversarial network framework, the discriminator should start to get, because these kind of augmentations are going to be labeled as out of distribution, the discriminator should start to pick up on this feature of global structure. And, it, and then thus it'll send the loss function down to the generator too, which will also start generating images that have this 
global structure because the discriminator knows that it, this, these kind of transformations are out of distribution, classify it as a fake image. So in addition to the jigsaw augmentation, the authors also focus on stitching, where we're um, similar to cut mix, except for, I'm not exactly sure how stitching differs from cut mix, but both of these augmentations, it looks like the idea is that you uh, randomly select half the image from one image and then paste it together with half an image from another image to form these new examples. And that's out of distribution because uh, you know, you're having these two images that would never coexist together, and you have completely different scenes like the dog's head features with this uh, landmark scene. Mix up is where you average out the pixels and then obviously this kind of images is, is um, out of distribution for natural images. Cut out is where you introduce these random uh, crops. Okay, and the, in cut, max, cut mix is um, you also have these random patches but they're replaced with another image compared to just uh, zeroed out. So stitching I think is more uh, probably like a bigger space that is covered for these crops. But Either way, these are the other kinds of negative augmentations that are considered, but again, this jigsaw, and particularly this idea of having this global structure be corrupted, is kind of the key best example of a negative out-of-distribution augmentation for this study. Before diving into how NDA is integrated with the GAN training and contrastive learning, here's an interesting diagram about this idea of overgeneralization without the use of negative data augmentations. So in this case, we have the clever data set where you have these different uh, objects like cylinders, uh, cubes, and so on, and they have different uh, colors. And it's, a, it's about a reasoning task of asking questions like, what is the object to the left of the purple cylinder? But aside from what this data set is actually used for, the point of this visualization is showing that when it's been trained on a data set of containing only two objects, it might overgeneralize to producing one object or three objects, even though these are out of the distribution of two objects. So without this explicit regularization of telling it that only having one object or only having three objects are out of distribution, it may still cover this generalization uh, and this um, this kind of uh, this kind of generation. So this idea has also been explored in papers like on the steerability of generative adversarial networks, where they show how you can traverse in the latent space to produce different. Uh, images and you see how it will still cover this large space but now that we're explicitly structuring it it won't generate these kind of images so this is kind of the uh, motivating idea of overgeneralization and trying to add additional structure with the use of these negative data augmentations and particularly telling the model that uh, th these kind of one objects or three objects are out of distribution. So to integrate negative data augmentation into the generative adversarial network framework we take our original real data set x and we form these uh, intentionally out of distribution transformed examples T of X. So th this is the real data that's labeled as real, the one label for the discriminator, and these are the zero labels of fake images. And then we, so we could also decide to uh, crop, group together in the batches the images that are produced from the generator with these intentionally out of distribution images and form that as our batch, or we could particularly design a third class for the out of distribution examples. And so there's a couple ways of thinking about the ways that we can uh, integrate the negative examples into the uh, real verse face fake task for our discriminator in the GAN framework. And then here's how negative data augmentation is integrated in contrastive learning. So instead of just having the contrastive uh, regularization with the negative distance between X and then uh, Z sub J uh, prime, where Z sub J is derived from the Q, we also are gonna have a Q of intentionally out of distribution examples, or we could derive this as a set of transformations of our original X. So we have some, a couple of different ways of defining this Q of out of distribution examples, and then we add this to the negative regularization in, in our uh, contrastive learning frameworks, like something like contrastive predictive coding, which is what's tested in this paper, or something like momentum contrast, the MoCo framework, which I think is kind of a more widely used uh, framework for doing this. Here's the first result of applying negative data augmentation to the big GAN training loop that I think is really interesting. So this is the difference in the discriminator's output. So the discriminator makes a prediction on real versus fake for each of these images compared to the original image and then compared to once it's had this um, jigsaw augmentation where you completely scramble up the uh, global structure of the image. So when you have this negative data augmentation, and this plot might be a little uh, deceiving because this is zero. This means that it has the same uh, prediction for each of the two images. So you see without any of this augmentation, it has the basically the same prediction for the original image, and then it's jigsaw augmentation with this real versus fake classification, which means it's probably overfitting to these local structures. That, that's at least one way you can interpret having the same prediction for an original image, and then once it's had this jigsaw transformation. Compared to with our negative data augmentation, it's clearly learned that this is an out of distribution kind of image and we see that it's you know this prior of a negative example has clearly been communicated to the discriminator and I think this is the most important result table to look through in this paper. 
This next table shows an interesting story as well. At first, it's showing the difference between using this as positive data augmentation compared to negative data augmentation. So positive data augmentation would mean that you apply this to the real images and then still label them as real. So here's the most interesting part about this. In Jigsaw, you see how the negative data augmentation performs much better. Uh, the FID score is a metric for evaluating genera generated image quality. And you see with Jigsaw, it performs a lot better. And then random flipping, where you actually are not doing a negative augmentation, random flipping is label preserving, then you have this inverse of the effect of it. So I think looking at these two results is a really interesting uh, tell on the efficacy of negative data augmentation with respect to complementing the different kinds of augmentations that we can use for computer vision or all sorts of these other data domains as you know this idea hits the road and leaves just computer vision and maybe hits natural language processing next. So here are some more interesting results showing that uh, Jigsaw improves on the big GAN baseline, performs better than the stitching augmentation, mix up, cut out, or cut mix, and then I'm not sure what uh, CR big GAN is. And then uh, some more results of showing this. Uh, this is conditional image generation. This The difference is um, in conditional gem image generation, you have the class label as well. So like the idea of conditional GANs versus unconditional GANs. And then here are some more results on image to image translation with the pix to pix uh, conditional GAN architecture. And then here are the results with contrastive learning, the jigsaw augmentation building on the baseline and then outperforming other augmentations like stitching. Uh, also good performance with cutout because again, cutout has these uh, random patches of cropped out uh, squares that have the z all zeros or all random static that are out of distribution for normal images as well. So we also have this interesting performance and this is the performance on uh, video data also. Here's the next really exciting set of results from applying negative data augmentation with contrastive representation learning. So at the end of a contrastive learning framework, we have a similarity score between pairs of images. So we have this joint embedding and then we apply something like cosine similarity between the embeddings of each of these different images. So shown in this plot are the original images on the bottom and then the jigsaw augmentation on the top, or uh, it, it depends on which image you're looking at. But we're seeing pairs of images with, that have this jigsaw augmentation as completely corrupted the global structure of the image. So shown in the shaded blue are the uh, NDA learned representations compared to the original representations. So we see uh, 0.65 compared to 0.45 is learning to push these uh, points much farther away from each other than they originally were. Uh, and same with all these other images. These examples of this new representation is learning to have more distance for these out of distribution uh, augmentations with the jigsaw augmentation. I think it's interesting to connect this idea of negative data augmentation with Jan LeCun's latest post on self-supervised learning the dark matter of intelligence. So amongst many things in this blog post, it motivates this idea for having these joint embedding architectures for uh, learning representations self-supervised in computer vision. You have these energy functions like contrastive learning or even the discriminator in the GAN framework that learn a similarity score for an XY pair. So one of the key things, and then shown again in this um, blog post, is describing the challenge of uh, training these energy models is about uh, knowing where in the space to push down on the uh, push up on the representation, or training it to have high energy between incompatible pairs. So I think having this explicit out of distribution structure in these joint embedding models might be an interesting solution to figuring out uh, how to normalize this model and where to push down on the represent or push sorry push up on the representation compared to uh, just using other examples from the image batches in the data set. So by particularly having out of distribution examples, we have a new uh, a new perspective on how to learn this. Uh, data manifold and how to learn these energy functions of compatibility between visual inputs. So with computer vision, it's easy to think of these uh, transformations that create out of distribution examples or just negative examples that corrupt the uh, class label of the instance. So next, I want to try to look at this next paper and I'm going to make a whole separate video about this of trying to extend this to natural language processing. So this paper, learning the difference that makes a difference with counterfactually augmented data, has a very interesting uh, manual labeling approach of changing the labels of these uh, scenes. So it's an augmentation that's particularly uh, changing the label. And I think this could be an interesting way to apply negative data augmentation for uh, natural language processing. And it's not quite as out of distribution as something like uh, the jigsaw puzzle, puzzle thing is, but it's still uh, this kind of idea of uh, changing the class label, adding this prior of saying, hey, this is a 
change in the class label from this augmentation, label it as such, and add it to maybe these contrastive learning frameworks that can help with, say, information retrieval or you know text similarity retrieval and all these kinds of things. So I think this is an interesting extension to trying to think about how we can do this outside of images and in text as well. Thank you so much for watching this video presenting negative data augmentation. I think this is a really interesting paper and helps us think more about how we can use data augmentation in our training loops, particularly exploring things like generative adversarial networks and contrastive learning. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.